You love the spiky, demonic vibe of Chaos Space Marines, but the idea of building those fiddly models and then painstakingly painting all of those crazy details fills you with dread. Well, you are in for a treat, because in this video we are going to show you how you can get awesome looking Chaos models on the table, ready for gaming, with a striking colour scheme in beginner friendly steps, without all the stress. You're watching Midwinter Minis, my name's Hattie, and I'm Guy, and let us introduce you to the Veil Touched. These aren't your average Warhammer Chaos Space Marines. In fact, these aren't even Warhammer. They're part of a brand new range of miniatures from Ravaged Star, a fresh new sci-fi tabletop game that just happens to share a similar model scale size with 40k. Pretty handy, huh? Also very handy is that this video has been kindly sponsored by Ravaged Star, and they've sent us some of the production models to take a look at. Now, this isn't the complete Veil touchline by any means, and we'll cover that in a minute, but what we have so far looks very, very cool indeed. We've got a mix of regular heavy armoured troops, some close combat specialists, heavy weapon wielders, and some hulking mutant monstrosities. There's some regular human-sized cannon fodder, and some great character models to lead your forces. Also, there's a great mix of both male and female models, so you can build up your army and theme however you want. Before we jump into painting, let's cover assembly. Only joking, there's no need to assemble anything. All the Ravaged Star models come pre-assembled. And while you won't need to do any sprue cutting or gluing, you might want to tidy up any mold lines you see. Just a gentle scrape with the back of a craft knife will sort them out. Also, some of the longer, skinnier components might be slightly wonky after being in transit, but it's an easy fix. Just warm them up with a hairdryer for a few seconds and gently reshape them using your fingers. And either allow them to cool as you hold them or just drop them into some cold water and they'll lock into shape straight away. While we haven't tried out the Ravage Star tabletop game yet, that's still in production, this first model release from the range is, in our opinion, the best way to start collecting Chaos Space Marines for beginners. They're brilliant dynamic models, a bit cheaper than Games Workshop's equivalent, and the complex, busy look that might seem a bit intimidating to paint will actually work beautifully for some very cheaty, fast and easy painting techniques. So let's show you what we mean. First up, I'm going to paint some of these big armoured models, including this savage looking character, and then Hattie's going to paint some of the cultist models using the same paints but in a different style, to show you how to have variety in your units without losing the overall look of your army. My idea for these models is to do something a little out of the ordinary, for demonic chaos models anyway, and that's to paint them mostly white, and a mix of very pale ghostly colours. And then I'm going to contrast and complement this by adding some realistic blood and gore effects to them, which will hopefully look really striking against the light armour. First, it's always a good idea to prime your models. This will not only give your paint a better surface to stick to, it'll also add a layer of colour that you can start working from straight away. Because I'm aiming for white, first I'm going to give the models an all over coat of grey spray paint from a rattle can. As these are pre-assembled, you might miss some areas, and that's okay. Rather than carry on blasting with your spray, which will start to clog up details, switch to a similar grey with your paintbrush and manually paint all the hard to reach spots. Thin your paint with a little water to keep the details nice and crisp. This is apparently the same grey as in the spray can, Citadel's Mechanica standard grey, but even by my stupid colourblind eyes I can see a difference. Anyway, the next step would have been spraying white from above and the top sides to simulate light hitting the model, but typically it started absolutely hooching down, so spray cans were off the menu. Instead, I achieved a similar effect using white ink through my airbrush. As I said, you can do this with a rattle can spray paint too, you absolutely don't need an airbrush for this technique, unless it's raining and you're in a rush. It doesn't need to be perfect coverage, but you can see what a dramatic difference it makes compared to just grey. Already you're starting to see those details popping out. Right, the next step didn't quite go as planned, but I'll show you what went wrong just so you know anyway. I wanted to add some black wash, Citadel Nuln Oil in this case, to everything. This would hypothetically sink into all the recesses, accentuating the detail and adding some quick contrast, but because I just used white ink instead of spray paint, it slightly reactivated the ink underneath, making the wash slightly more grey than black. Now, this wasn't a problem at all for this scheme, and you can actually achieve this kind of effect on purpose instead of by accident by using a contrast paint like Apothecary White, or even by intentionally mixing a tiny bit of white paint into your black wash before you use it. Anyway, it looks pretty cool. Next, I'm going to use a really vibrant white paint, AK White in this case, to dry brush just the faces, chests, power packs and top facing parts of the arms. This will make the top halves of the models appear brighter and draw the eye a bit more. 
And by the way, if you're confused by any of the terms I'm using here, like dry brush or wash or anything like that, I'll leave a link in the video description to a video I made on painting your first ever model, which includes really basic instructions on everything involved and all the common techniques. As I said, you can see the dry brushed model on the right is more vibrant compared to the model on the left. Now let's add some pale colours to the models. First, let's use Rust Grey, a very pale bluish grey, to base coat all of the drapey fabric on the models. Once that's done, I mixed a tiny bit of white into the Rust Grey on the palette to make it lighter and started sketching on some highlights where the raised areas of fabric are, totally avoiding the recesses. The sketchy brush strokes will also help hint at some fabric texture. Now let's get the metal parts like the weapons and spikes painted with a metallic. I'm going to try out this gun metal from TT Combat. I tried most of the preview paints I was sent in last week's video, but I was painting a dinosaur head and there wasn't much cool for metallics there. Using this paint, I covered all of the ranged weapons, all of the close combat weapons, picked out the grenades at their waist, and the chains that some of them had draped across their bodies. As you can probably tell, even though I'm showing you these techniques on these Ravaged Star Veil Touch models, these similar elements – armor, spikes, tabards, chains, weapons, grenades – are pretty universal, whether you're painting these or official Games Workshop Chaos Space Marines. Killing two birds with one stone here, I'm going to use the contrast paint Skeleton Horde, thinned with some extra contrast medium to paint the horns and leather parts, like their ammo pouches. Using a contrast paint will let the shading we did earlier show through, while still being quite a pale colour, thanks to thinning it with medium. As planned, the models are very pale, but we can increase the contrast of the overall look by giving them dark bases, so I'll use a very dark charcoal -y off black, Vallejo's German Grey, to paint the bases and the rims. While we wait for those to dry, let's revisit the black wash and apply it all over the weapons and parts that we painted gunmetal to add some recess shading. I'm also going to add a little bit of this wash to areas that still look a bit too eye-catching or that could do with some extra contrast, like in the deep folds of the fabric, inner areas of the armour panels, especially on the legs, but leaving the trim nice and bright. It's a really quick step but very effective. The model on the left is the one I just did and the standard bearer on the right is still waiting for that extra black wash. Now the bases are definitely dry, I'll give them a dry brush with the first grey we used, Mechanica Standard Grey in this case, and this will help pick out the texture on the ashen, skull-strewn wasteland they're standing on. I also lightened up the grey with a tiny touch of white on my palette and gave them a second, more subtle dry brush to the bases to add some extra contrast. Now to highlight the horns and pale leather, we'll grab everyone's favourite warm off-white. <coughs> Sorry, it's been a while. Um, pale sand? Yes indeed. Pale sand. Just a very light touch along some of the pointiest edges is all you need. Less is more. There's also a couple of skulls here and there which I'll highlight the top facing parts with pale sand too. Now my banner bearer model here isn't wearing a helmet. I mean, that's a choice. A stupid choice, but that's not a good reason to not paint her face. Let's give her a darker skin tone so it doesn't all just blend in with that pale armour. I started with Katachan flesh, thinned it with a little water and painted the skin on the face. I also dropped a little bit of this into the eye sockets of the various skulls to deepen the shadows a bit too. I then grabbed German Grey and base coated her hair. To highlight the face, I mixed in a little bit of pale sand to the Katachan flesh on the palette and picked out the details around the forehead, brows, nose and cheekbones. Again, less is more, just a hint of a lighter colour is often enough. Now, totally optional, but if you feel confident enough with a fine brush point, you can add a little bit of off-white to the eyes themselves. If you mess up the shape, you can tidy up with whatever skin tone you were using on the face, no problem. A little bit of back and forth, and you should have something that vaguely resembles human eyes. Right, almost there. I've been putting off painting this banner because I'm not 100% sure how I want it to look, but I think I've finally figured it out now. Rather than displaying an emblem or iconography, I want it to look like pale fabric that's been dragged through the blood of their enemies to match the blood and gore theme of this squad. I painted the rest of the structural part of the banner with gunmetal and shaded it like all the other metallic parts, and then I mixed pale sand and Mechanica's standard grey to create a new, unique colour to this scheme, but still by using the paints we've already used, and base coated the fabric. It's actually come out quite green, which is interesting. I mixed in more grey and painted this slightly darker colour into the recesses on the fabric. And then I made a lighter mix of the same colour with more pale sand than grey and did some sketchy highlights on the top, sticky out parts of the fabric folds. And now we're ready to get nasty and make these bland marines look gruesome AF. 
To do this, I'm going to follow a guide from one of my favourite Instagram painters who recently made the jump to YouTube, Mavericks Paint. Go give him a follow and share the love. A painting guide within a painting guide with Guy. Guideception. That's such an old meme. And oh. Shush. Step one, blood for the blood god and a very stiff bristle brush. The older and mankier, the better. Dab your brush into the blood god paint and then dab it onto the bladed weapons here and there. Not overdoing it, as there are a few more steps still to go. Everything at this point will appear like fresh, bright, wet blood on the finished model. Let the imperfect, random shape of the bristles guide the patterns rather than trying to artistically paint it on, if you know what I mean. I also added some to the parts of the models that I thought might be involved in the action. Fists, knees, feet, shoulders, faces even. These are giant, furious, demonic superhumans after all. It's not out of the realms of possibility that they might be doing some pretty brutal shoulder barges, head stomping or skull crushing with their hands. Step 2. Add a little bit of black ink into that blood for the blood god to create a darker, more gory tone, and then add this sparingly near the other bloodied areas to create some variation in the blood. Step 3. Let's add some realistic splatter by getting a flat-headed brush, dipping it in blood for the blood god, and then swiping a toothpick backwards through the bristles. As they spring back into shape, they'll throw small flecks of paint. Now rather than throwing it anywhere willy-nilly, try to aim it in the direction you think the blood would travel for extra realism. Also, sorry to butt in, but this is almost a perfect match for my nail varnish. Maybe I should just paint my nails with Warhammer paints. Also, don't be an idiot like me. Put some paper down before you do this. Now the final step, the old Yoohoo glue slime trick. Mix regular Yoohoo glue together, about 50-50 with Blood for the Blood God. Mix it around with a toothpick on some scrap card until it starts to form strands. Then anchor them in place on a particularly sharp bit of a weapon, and then stretch the goop out. Move it around, spin it around the weapon, and attach it to another part. This works ridiculously well to add random, unidentifiable gore chunks to your models. Also, this random little blob left on the card looks like a scale model heart. Maybe I'll use it in a future video. Right, banner time. Let's mix a little bit of black into some corn red for a very deep bloody colour. And then I painted this pretty free and easy, quite patchy from the middle to the bottom, making sure everything at the bottom edge was totally covered. To break the clean lines, I did the old toothpick splatter technique from a minute ago. And for the brighter, fresher blood, I used some Citadel Wazdaka... No, I didn't. Jesus, look at this mess. Sort your pots out, G-dubs. Let's use TT Combat's new Viscera Red instead. A few smaller splats stippled onto the raised areas, and then another go with the toothpick splats. For the final step, we're going to add a bit of matte varnish to the blood-stained fabric areas. Blood on hard surfaces will stay shiny and gross for longer, but blood on fabric will soak in and lose its sheen pretty fast, and that's what the varnish will do. Okay, let's take a look and see what we've got here. Amazing. I love the style of these models. I think the scheme works really well with this new Veil Touch range. A nice throwback to some of the ludicrous 80s and 90s ultraviolence of my favourite games and videos. Right. Following on with the theme, I want these cultists to look like they fit in with the general vibe of the Chaos Marines guy just painted, and using the same colour palette, just in a different way. Also, I'm going to be keeping it simple, so you can follow along no matter how new you are to mini painting. Instead of grey, I started with a black primer, as I wanted these to be a bit darker and dingier. These models have a kind of cybergoth meets medieval peasant thing going on, so I reckon the darker colours will suit them. Like Guy, I wanted to spray mine from above, but with a blood red spray paint like Mephiston Red instead of white, but it was raining really heavily so I had to do it indoors. I started by giving the models a spray from the top down and sides with corn red. I know I said beginner friendly and I'm using an airbrush, but honestly you could just get the same effect by dry brushing downwards. I just used the airbrush to save a bit of time. 
Okay, now I'm going to grab that Viscera Red and do a proper dry brush over all the fabric, adding some vibrancy and contrast to the clothing. You have to be careful when highlighting red not to make things look too pink. So the brightest colour here is going to be Pale Sand and Viscera Red in a 50-50 mix, just to dry brush the fabric quite lightly. It is a little bit pink, but it's such a small layer you won't really notice. Now let's pick out the main areas with base coats. First, I darkened down some pale sand with a little bit of Katachan flesh to create a bit of a pallid, deathly skin tone, and base coated the faces, exposed arms, and occasional midriff. Next, I'll use rust grey to paint the straps, pouches, and wraps around their guns. All the guns and close combat weapons were painted using TT Combat's gun metal. Also, for the sake of saving a bit of time, those ornate armour boots are getting painted silver. It'll just help them stand out against the darker bases, which just like Guy's Marines are going to be base coated with German Grey. If you wanted to spend more time on these models, rather than getting them on the table nice and fast, you could do lots of different hair colours, but for my girls, they're all getting German Grey hair too. Now I'll switch out to Pale Sand and use this to base coat all of the skulls. Most of them also have these little badges that look a bit like purity seals, so I'll paint the parchment of those with pale sand too. When you paint things fast and sloppy like I do, you're probably going to make mistakes, but that's okay. The robes have a few splats on them, so I'm just going to go and tidy them back up using corn red. And now while the base coats are down and everything's quite neat, let's add an all over wash to everything. I'll mix equal parts of Nuln Oil, Agrax Earthshade and Contrast Medium. The reason I add the medium is to dilute the washes and make them just a little bit less intense. After they're dry, you could just call it a day here, but if you want to spend a bit more time on them, you could just add a few more details, like I'm going to. I'm going to mix up that original flesh tone again, but use a bit more pale sand to make it lighter. I can still see the original colour here on my palette, which helps. Thin it with a bit of water so it'll make it a bit more transparent, and then add a little highlight here and there to the faces, the brows, the forehead, the nose, and any top facing parts of exposed skin, like the forearms. Next, I'll mix a bit of white into the rust grey to make a highlight colour for the straps and pouches. You don't have to highlight everything, just a little touch here and there along the sharpest bits. Nothing on the undersides though. The skulls on these dangly things could do with a quick touch of pure pale sand too to lighten up the tops, and maybe a bit around the eye sockets as well. Now for a quick highlight on the clothing. I added a tiny touch of pale sand to Viscera Red, which will make it a bit brighter without turning it super pink, and then picked out a few of the most dramatic swooshy bits of fabric to add more jazz to. Right, almost there. Let's add a dry brush of Mechanica Standard Grey to the bases, being a bit careful not to get too much on the feet, but if you do, just think of it as dust from the environment. Let's also add that to the hair too. And then finally, I added a tiny bit of white to that grey to make it a bit brighter and did a bit more of a sparing dry brush on both the base and the hair. And with that, we're done! A squad of five funky, fighty ladies painted up in no time at all in really quick, easy steps, using the same paints as the big veil touch chaos marine things, but still giving them a unique look. I'd love to know what you think, but also there's someone else I want to see these. Dave from Mini Wargaming is the driving force behind Ravaged Star and helped advise the look and feel of these models. He's also a total hobby hero to me and being honest, I never would have got back into Warhammer and Wargaming in general if it wasn't for Mini Wargaming's battle reports. So, let's see what he thinks. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, I think he likes them. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a positive. By the way, if you want a list of exactly what paints were used in this video, there's a list in the video description and also a few affiliate links to some of the tools we used too, just in case you fancy treating yourself. And you can also help the channel out at no extra cost to you. So, they're a new model range and we've got early access, so I'm sure you've got questions that you want answered. Let me run through a couple of things that I was curious about. How big are they? Here's a little size comparison. 
So the Veil Touch Marines are a very similar height to both the new Games Workshop Chaos Space Marine and Primaris Marine models, but the Cultist models are a good bit taller, more similar to the scale of the new Necromunda models than the current Imperial Guard or Chaos Cultist range. One fun thing though is that if you want to do an all-female army of Chaos-themed Marines, like Corrupted Sisters of Battle or something, they're the same scale as the other Power Armoured Soldiers and make the official Games Workshop Adeptus Sororitas look pretty scrawny and pathetic by comparison. Also, because they're pre-assembled from solid parts and not flat pack kits, they're actually substantially more weighty than Games Workshop models. Most built painted models this size will be around 6 to 8 grams, but most of these veil touched are at least double that, and the big characters are in the mid 30s, so they have a nice heft to them. Metal models tend to be about 50 grams for an infantry model, just to give you a frame of reference. Also, a small fun thing I noticed is that the human models don't have skulls strewn across their bases, which would have maybe made them a bit more out of place in skirmish games like Necromunda, so it's nice that they're a bit more subtle. Any downsides? Well, maybe a few if you're being nitpicky. Because they're pre-built, there's slightly less scope for customization, but I suppose that's not really the point of them. If you want to paint super detailed stuff, it might annoy you that everything is already built and you can't do it in sub-assemblies, but that's why I reckon this stuff is perfect for beginners, or people who want to get stuff painted fast. The way that some of the sculpts work is that a few of the bodies are shared, but equipment and faces are different, but actually, Games Workshop do that as well, and even being picky, that's kind of it for the downsides. So I suppose the last big question is, how do you get hold of these? Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that if you're watching this video in the week it comes out, you've still got time to get some of these models. Because Ravage Star is essentially a crowdfunded game, the first few releases are going to be limited until they know what the demand is going forward. So if you want some of these models, whether it's a big army box or just some extra marines, a fun character or two, or even some vehicles, get your order in now. Now. The bad news, obviously, is that I think once they're gone, they're gone. I'm really excited to see where Ravage Star goes from here though. From chatting to Dave, it seems like the aim is to have a game that's thematically similar to 40k, but with a far simpler rule set, where you don't need a whole library of books to play a single game, with a basic rule set and physical data sheets for all of the units and special rules. Apparently their next goal is to create a boxed game featuring creepy alien bug monsters and angry space dwarves, which I'm 100% down for. I'm not sure if that's public knowledge yet, but hey, you heard it here first. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and a huge thanks to Ravage Star for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to get your order in if you fancy any of these models, and we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Bye bye.